I'm Bianca, and I'm a level one chef. I'm Gabrielle, and I'm a level two chef. Hi, I'm Bill. I'm the co-owner and pastry chef of Mimi's Diner, and I've been a baker for over 10 years. We know everyone's favorite cookie is Oreo, but the perfect label of love is homemade Oreos. So these cookies are called Alfajores de Maicena. It's going to be a really buttery, almost shortbread-like cookie with dulce de leche in the middle, and then we're gonna roll it in coconut. Today I'm making a pretzel Linzer cookie with a chocolate peanut butter ganache. Everybody loves chocolate and peanut butter. This cookie is inspired by a cookie from Lost Bread in Philadelphia. They have a pretzel shortbread, which is one of my favorite cookies ever. We're gonna start by making the dough. We have flour, and we're gonna mix some cocoa powder and add a tinch of baking soda. Mmm, it smells like chocolate. I'm going to go ahead and sift my flour and cornstarch and baking powder. I really love that this recipe uses cornstarch, probably one of the most important elements of this cookie. And I think it's also a testament to this region in Argentina and Peru, where you know corn is such a valuable and important part of the culture, and baking powder. I'm gonna start by grinding some pretzels. These are just store-bought pretzels. It's essentially pretzel flour with some chunks in it. I'm gonna add these to the flour and that's all of our dry ingredients. We're gonna start by that's creaming creamy. butter, sugar, and salt. This is gonna help us create a light and fluffy goodness. I am an amateur at this mixer as well. Okay, so, oh, let's not get too crazy. And I'm gonna let this go for about two minutes. I want it to really incorporate, uh, and I want there to it to be really smooth and really fluffy. I'm gonna add one egg yolk. It's not at all hard to separate an egg yolk. Oh, I I totally take two. There we go. Now it looks like a little pile of sunshine. Did you hear the crack? <laughs> so we're gonna mix the eggs. Oh, oh, oh. oh. Time to add in my vanilla. Next and last step for making this dough is just adding your dry ingredients. I'm gonna go ahead and add these all in at one time. I'm gonna do this in three batches. Okay. You really don't wanna overwork this dough. You want it to be nice and tender and sandy like a shortbread. I'm doing a little bit at a time so everything is incorporating evenly and it's just easier to manage that way too. When I have all the flour in there at once, it it's just really challenging to incorporate. You really wanna make sure that this is thoroughly combined so that you don't have little streaks of just butter and sugar in your dough because when you have these cookies, they'll just kind of melt with little holes in them. You want them to be nice and firm and together. I hope what I'm doing right now is what I'm supposed to be doing, but we'll see. It's smelling like three o'clock, coming home after school. My mom already has the cookies in the oven. It's giving me flashbacks. This is the dough. We're just going to uh, form this into a disc, wrap it up, and put it in the fridge. So I really like the lemon zest. It just adds like a nice brightness of flavor. You don't need to use a ton because you don't want it to overpower the flavor of the cookie. You just kind of want a nice little kiss of lemon. I'm really bad at working plastic wrap. We're just gonna kind of gently pat it into a disc. So we're gonna form this into a long log. <laughs> it's not staying on the wrap, but you know what, you gotta improvise. So I think this is a better idea. This, this is, is my dough. dough and I'm gonna go and put this into the fridge for an hour and then we're gonna roll it up. All right, this has been resting in the fridge for an hour. We're gonna let it come up a little bit to room temperature just so it's easier to work with. So I'm gonna roll this out between two pieces of parchment. I am gonna use a little bit of flour. So I'm just gonna take some and sprinkle and spread it around because we don't want this sticking. Our dough has been in the fridge for about an hour and now we're ready to slice them into cookies. You want these cookies to be pretty thin, but you also want to make sure that they're not burning in the oven. That's really important too. You'd think I'd have beefier forearms from rolling out all the dough I do. And there we go. That looks pretty good. Okay. So now we're going to slice them about a quarter of an inch. Now in half of these, so in 10 of the rounds, we're gonna cut out a one inch round as like a little window for the ganache to peek through. 
you can see I'm cutting it out just to like a little bit of a side. I can already kind of see some places where they're a little thicker than others. Um, and that's fine. Now these will have a little bit of a rustic look to them because they do have those nice crispy chunky pieces of pretzel in them, but you wanna keep them as nice and crisp as possible. I'm gonna take these and put them in the freezer for like 10, 15 minutes to get them nice and firm and then we'll come back and finish them off. So now we're just gonna place our cookies in the baking pan. When I space my cookies apart, you know, I kind of just go with the flow and what looks good. But also, you know, you could just separate it by your finger. They should be maybe like an inch apart. You don't want them to be too close together because they will expand a little bit. These have been in the freezer for 10 to 15 minutes. They're nice and chilled, nice and hard. We're going to uh, make our lye mixture. So I'm gonna add this powdered lye to cold water. You want it to be cold because you just don't wanna be dipping your cookie dough into warm water. Again, be really careful when working with lye because it will, um, if it gets onto your skin, it will essentially take the fats and oils in your skin and start making them into soap. I'm gonna put my gloves on. Let's get to work. So I'm gonna just gently dip it Try and get it all the way up the sides. Kind of shake off the excess and then let it dry over there. Lye is used in traditional pretzel making. Um, when you see a pretzel that's got that kind of glossy, mahogany appearance on the outside, that's the lye bath. Um, it also adds that like very specific pretzel tang to the outside, which is why we're using it in this cookie because it really kind of gives it that extra pretzel oomph. It smells good. I mean, does it look as good as it smells? <laughs> we'll see, TBD. Onto our sprayed sheet pan, I'm gonna put these. They've been drip drying for just a couple seconds. We're gonna pop these in the freezer for about five minutes uh, just to get them nice and firm again. And then I'm gonna top them with the pretzel salt and put them in the oven. All right, these have been in the freezer for about five minutes. This is a uh, pretzel salt, just nice and coarse. You wanna do just a little bit on these, not too much. Our cookies, they're cut and ready to go. And now we're gonna put them in the oven. My cookies are now shaped and ready to go into the oven at about 350 degrees for between nine and 11 minutes. All right, I'm gonna throw these in the oven at 350 for about 12 minutes. While my cookies are baking, I'm going to make my filling. Okay, so we're gonna mix the butter with powdered sugar, vanilla extract with a pinch of salt. Mix it for maybe about five minutes. Shout out to all the moms the grandmas, the aunties that, that does this by hand. This is not a joke, okay? We are going to go ahead and make my filling, which is none other than dulce de leche. Today we're gonna to be making it in an instant pot. This is definitely the fastest way and the safest way. Sweeten condensed milk, cover this lid, wrap it around, putting this in my instant pot. I'm trying to avoid getting water on the can. It doesn't matter that much. I get it to like twist on. Just like that. Turn it on high and pressure cook, and it's set for 40 minutes, and we're good to go. That easy. We're gonna quickly make our ganache. I've got dark chocolate here. This is 70% cocoa. You can use really whatever you have on hand. So we've got some cream here, just heavy cream, uh, and I'm going to heat it up just under a boil, like a strong simmer. You just wanna give this a chop. The only thing that's gonna be melting this is the heat of the cream, so you want it to be kind of in smaller pieces to make it easier. That looks good. It's giving me light and fluffy goodness. The child in me wants to lick this so badly. <laughs> this is our cream filling. Now my sweetened condensed milk has transformed into dulce de leche. Release the steam. <laughs> Still a little wet. <laughs> Gonna peel this off very carefully. Ooh! The color has completely transformed and now it's that really pretty caramely color. Exactly kind of the consistency and it smells incredible. So this is what we wanted. All right, there we go. See, we're just starting to boil here. I'm gonna take this hot cream and uh, pour it right over our chocolate. I'm also gonna go ahead and add the corn syrup right now. You can add this while it's hot. I'm just gonna let this sit for a few minutes um, to let all that chocolate get nice and soft. And once we do, we're gonna whisk it. Ganache is one of my favorite things because it always seems a little bit like magic. I'm gonna pour this into the bowl using this. It's not quite perfect, but once I give this a good stir, 
then everything will kind of be a little more uniform and it will congeal together in the way that I want to. And once it cools a little bit too, the texture won't be quite so liquidy and that's going to be really nice when I'm using it to bind together my two cookies. This is looking really good and my dulce de leche is ready to go. This has been setting for a few minutes, should be nice and soft. We're just gonna go ahead and whisk this together. Kind of feel around and make sure you don't have any real hard chunks of chocolate before you go ahead and mix it. Seems like we're doing pretty good. We're gonna go ahead now and add our peanut butter and our room temperature butter. Now this is all the all natural peanut butter, the kind that will separate in the jar, which is nice. And then just our butter until it's nice and blended, nice and glossy. This is the uh, peanut butter chocolate ganache. It's all set. We're gonna let it sit for a minute. Then we're gonna put it in a piping bag and fill our cookies. Okay, so we're back. We let them cool a little bit because ultimately if they don't cool and you put the cream on too quickly, the cream will melt. melt. Didn't space them out as much as I could have, but you know what you say? You say this is how I wanted them. <laughs> That's what you say. You can see that the lye gave this that nice glossy sort of pretzel, classic pretzel look. Um, you've got the little salt on there. It just like kind of reads as a pretzel. You know that this is a pretzel and that you wouldn't get that if it wasn't for the lye glaze. I'm going to grab a nice generous gob of this dolce de leche. I might not eat all of this, but I am not opposed to laying on the filling nice and thick because we are then going to be rolling these in shredded coconut. So you wanna have enough that when you go ahead and pop on your top cookie, you have a nice amount that's poking through that's gonna just be nicely rolled. And I'm gonna go ahead and just Roll the edges right like that. Make sure it gets in all those nooks and crannies. And then, abajores de maicena. Onto the plate. They're breaking apart on me, no. No, we didn't let them cool long enough. So right now we have like a little cookie crumble Oreo cake going on right here. I'm telling you, party stopper. You bring these in, the party will Stop, but in a good way, not, then it will resume after everyone has eaten the cookies. You're gonna put the ganache on the bottom of the cookies. Pipe a bit in the middle. My dollop of ganache on here. I've got the top here. We're just gonna put these two together. Give it a nice little wiggle to settle it in there. And there's your cookie. It's looking kind of good. Some of them got a little cracked, but <laughs> I don't think that'll take away from the taste. I'm being generous. You just kind of have to be because otherwise you don't you don't want them to look skimpy. You know, you don't want those skimpy cookies. You want it to be nicely filled. All right, oh yes. A nice little dollop about that much and the top of the cookie on there like that. Voila, these are my sandwich cookies, homemade Oreos. These are my sandwich cookies. These are my pretzel Linzer cookies with chocolate peanut butter ganache. It's time to give these a taste. Okay, here we go. Yum. Mm. <laughs> Yum. It's giving me more cake than cookie, but the chocolate, the taste of chocolate is really great. The dulce de leche is super just soft, and the coconut adds just a little bit of extra something and texture. The citrus just brightens up the sweetness from the dulce de leche and from the cookies themselves. Oh my gosh, it's so good. I love these like little um, crunchy bits of the pretzel in the sort of shortbread texture. It's not so like just a sandy all the way through. I, I don't know. And the, the salt on top, I'm a, I'm a sucker for salt. So it's, it's a good cookie. <laughs> if I made these again, I definitely would uh, slice the dough a bit thinner. The smaller they are, the more likely they're to maintain its shape. But overall, you know, I give it an okay. No, not an excellent, but an A for effort. <laughs> different people have uh, different strategies of eating their sandwich cookie. I eat a sandwich cookie as one whole piece. You've got the top, the bottom, and the filling. It's a sandwich cookie for a reason. This is the way it was intended, and this is the way I'm gonna eat it, for sure. Oh yeah, it's so good. <laughs> 
Sandwich cookies are a delectable treat with endless options for combining flavors and textures. Let's see how each of our chefs made theirs. Bianca made a chocolate sandwich cookie that looks a lot like an Oreo. She used the creaming method for her cookie base, which means she mixed her butter and granulated sugar together to increase volume and porosity to her cookie dough. The sugar crystals bore small holes in the solid but soft butter, essentially aerating the butter. Gabby made a South American inspired sandwich cookie. Like Bianca, she used the creaming method, but instead of using only all purpose flour, Gabby used a combination of all purpose flour plus cornstarch. Cornstarch has no gluten proteins, while all purpose flour does. In a cookie, we don't want gluten development. By using a combination of these two starches, Gabby's ensuring that she has a very tender cookie that crumbles into sweetness once you start to eat it. Bill made a delicious, slightly savory original cookie that has some of the flavors of a soft pretzel, but with a tender, crumbly shortbread texture. Like Bianca and Gabby, Bill also used the creaming method, but added ground pretzels along with his dry ingredients. He wanted to include the slightly puckery tang that comes from pretzels because they're dipped in food grade lye prior to boiling and baking. The lye raises the pH of the outside of the pretzel, making it more alkaline and expediting Maillard browning, which happens very rapidly under alkaline conditions. That's why pretzels are very dark on the outside and still quite white on the inside. I don't know why lye is caustic and dangerous until it's baked. Maybe that's a great question for the food scientist. There are many chemical reactions that happen once heat is applied, but it's basically because the caustic lye reacts with the carbon dioxide and water and proteins present to form non-toxic sodium carbonate, making it safe to eat. It's the sodium carbonate that has the slightly soapy taste associated with pretzels. Bianca made a simple uncooked blend of confectioner sugar and butter with a bit of vanilla extract and a pinch of salt. It's thick and sweet, but it might not be the smoothest filling for her cookie. Confectioner sugar has a smaller particle size than table sugar, but it still won't dissolve completely in the water and the butter, so you might detect some particulate when you eat it. It's a labor of love. Gabby made dulce de leche as her filling. She took a can of sweetened condensed milk, which is made from milk that has 15% sugar by volume added, and then reduced it to concentrate the milk to approximately one third its former volume. It's high in sugar and fat. The sugar's caramelized and Maillard reaction occurs with the milk proteins and sugars. And she ended up with a caramel sauce that was dark, smooth, and full of complex caramel and dairy flavors. There's something really satisfying about making your own dulce de leche. Bill made a chocolate peanut butter ganache, which is why he's our level three chef. It's simply sublime. Ganache is chocolate that's been emulsified with cream, and it's delicious. Ganache is one part chocolate and one part heated cream. He whipped in peanut butter, which added a roasted, nutty, slight saltiness to this rich ganache and gave it a spreadable texture. That's a good cookie. No matter how you fill them, sandwich cookies are delicious with so many possibilities for flavor combinations. Next time you're in the mood for a sweet treat, we hope you'll take some tips from our three talented chefs and spend a few hours baking. It's worth the reward afterward.